What if you had a guide who could tell you how to bridge a gap between who you are today and who you're destined to be? What if each week you could hear a story of someone who has tried and succeeded, or perhaps tried and failed, but learned something in the process? Limitless Spirit is a weekly podcast where host Helen Todd interviews guests about topics and personal stories on defining life's purpose, pursuing personal growth, and developing a deeper faith in Christ. When you say yes to God, it is going to be like the adventure of a lifetime. You are going to see God use you. You're going to see God show you his his glory. You're going to see his glory in your story. And just like the Israelites went into the promised land, once they got there, they had to possess the land. And that's what yes is. A daily yes is possessing that which God has called us to and seeing God be the promise maker, be the promise keeper. And that's what I'll tell you as you say yes, that every promise he makes, he keeps because he is good and he does not change. Welcome to the Limitless Spirit Podcast. I'm your host, Helen Todd. In this episode, I speak with Jen Hand. She's the executive director and founder of Coming Alive Ministries. And she has a zest for life and an adventurous spirit. She loves to go around the world sharing about the good news of Jesus Christ and uh, spent several years in Southeast Asia as a missionary and has traveled to 22 countries to share the love of Jesus. Her book just came out, and I love the title of the book, My Yes is on the Table. It talks about the importance of overcoming our fears and stepping out in faith and always saying yes to God. In this episode, we talk with Jen about her story of surrender, how she has seen God move in her life, and what you can expect when you put your yes on the table. I hope you enjoy this episode of the Limitless Spirit podcast. Good morning, Jen. Welcome to the Limitless Spirit podcast. Good morning, Helen. I'm so honored and happy to be here with you. Well, I am excited just to even get to know you. I read uh, about you on your website. What a fascinating bio you have. And I can't wait to talk about your book because I think the topic is very important and uh, I want to explore more on that. But tell me a little bit about you. Uh, Sounds like you've had a pretty exciting life. (laughs) I know people say sometimes maybe some cameras should follow me, Helen, because I have been blessed with an exciting life of living. I'm currently living my ministry dream with Coming Alive Ministries founded in 2012. And I get to travel the world and offer hope on the holy ground of suffering through trauma care after natural disasters. So I've been to now around 52 countries and um, just have been so blessed to see what God is doing around the world. So um, that's part of my ministry. And as far as just personally, I am single and I am an aunt to four amazing kiddos. I love my twin sister has four kids who I adore spoiling rotten. And I love to drink coffee. So I wish I was drinking coffee with you, Helen, right now or your listeners. And we were just sharing stories about life. Well, you're speaking my language right there. Coffee is definitely something very special to me. (laughs) I mean, um, I think I'm coffeeed out for this morning, so or I would share a cup with you. So interesting, your twin sister has four kids and you are their doting aunt. Um, Do you ever pose as their mom? You know what? That's so funny. I They have never gotten me confused. So they would know 100%. But my little, uh, my well, now he's 13, nephew, the oldest, he did not meet me until I was one, until he was one, because I lived overseas. And so imagine meeting someone that looks just like your mom at one years old, and he came right to me, and it was the most special moment. So I think he might have been a bit confused. Oh, how interesting. So are you, do you really look very much alike? Are you identical twins? We are identical. Yes. So, and her husband has never gotten us confused either, Helen. So, (laughs) well, I think that's true love. You just know the person you love, right? That's right. That's right. (laughs) 
So uh, I know that you have spent many years of your life in Nepal. Was this the first place where you felt called to travel? I had been, uh, my first overseas trip was to Japan, which Helen was, I was a junior in college and it was my first time on an airplane. So uh, 14 hours, go big or go home, right? And so uh, I have been to Japan, but my first long ex extended time beyond that, I lived um, as a, for a summer in Nepal and then began to sense God calling me back to go there and honestly thought I would live and die there as a missionary. That was a place that grabbed my heart and a people that God really called me to. And so I left everything here and went and moved to, I thought, stay, live and die there um, in that country and that place and learned the language and the people and really saw that God is at work in that nation. He's at work in the nations, but I got to see him work there, not only in the people, but also in me. Because when we say yes to God, wow, he takes us on a journey with him and we begin to see him equip us for that which he has called us because we cannot do it on our own. I could not do it on my own. And I just saw him and experienced him there. That is amazing. And so when you felt uh, called to go to Nepal, was there a moment of hesitation or it was just the excitement of the youth and I was like, I'm going, I don't care. <laughs> uh, well, it was a little bit of all of the above, right? There was so much excitement. When you say yes to God, it is very exciting and you know you're in for an adventure, but just like the Israelites probably felt when they're on the edge of their promised land, I had those feelings of, I know this is where God is calling me, but this is terrifying to leave your your people, your family, um, what you know. And um, I was young. I mean, I still feel young, even though I just turned 40. I'm still young. But I um, was leaving everything familiar. And, and we have a very close family. So of course, the idea of not being with them, leaving my twin sister and going to a place that was unknown to me was I had all the fears. So uh, I definitely had moments where I'm like, is this really what you're calling me to? But then also the excitement of, is this really what you're calling me to all at the same time? How old were you when you traveled to Nepal first? Oh, goodness. Um, I think I started, I left there to go live as a career missionary in um, oh, this is this is a test of my math skills, Helen. Um, uh, I left in 2006, so I'm now 40. What would that make me? Uh, in my 20s, right? Yes, I was young. <laughs> and so you spent a number of years there, and you thought this is the place where you will spend the rest of your life. You're obviously so connected to the people and the culture and... Uh, then God suddenly calls you to something else. And uh, so was there a difference, different level of difficulty in saying yes to God this time than it was the first time? I think it was when we have our plans and we think this is what yes will look like. And we can sometimes want our yes to look the same forever because we get comfortable. And I know people think that feels crazy that Nepal was comfortable because a lot of people are don't want to say yes to God. So he doesn't call them uh, overseas to the remote parts of the world. But for me, this yes, when I begin to sense God was calling me not just to that place and that people was a very hard yes, because I was thinking, I've worked so hard to learn this, to learn these people, learn the language. And this was my plan, God. And, and also a big one, what will people think? I told them I was going. My, my pride, really, I, I could really have a fear of rejection. And so just having to surrender that along with my yes, um, God, I'm surrendering my fear. I want to say yes to you, but I'm surrendering my fear of rejection as well and my pride. And so, yes, it was a very, and I didn't know what God was calling me to, just that surrender was leaving what I thought was where I would stay. So, so do you still think it was easier for you to say yes the first time than the second time? I think it was a different 
easy, if that makes sense. Um, because one was surrendering all that I knew and had lived in my whole life. And the other was surrendering what I thought was what I would know for my life. So both were different. Um, both caused me to have to move from fear to faith and not get stuck in fear stops, but take faith steps. And each of those yeses required uh, wrestling with the Lord. Here's my fear, God. Show me. Show me just like you showed Joshua. And I would encourage the listener right now um, that the same God that came alongside Joshua as his yes was leading the people into the promised land and said, be strong and courageous in Joshua 1, 9. He said, "But I, for I am with you. And that same God uh, reminded me that in both of those yeses, he was with me. And I just had to surrender what I thought was his plans for me and follow. I'm thinking saying yes to God would not be an issue for us at all if we were in complete harmony, you know, with God's will for our lives and at the top level of our spiritual maturity. But unfortunately, it, it's a struggle, you know. Uh, <laughs> the walk of faith is... Um, uh, is well, it's like marriage. It's it's just something that uh, you work on and you learn as you go. And so there are so many big and small yeses that we have mm -hmm. to work through in our walk with God. So uh, what inspired you? Uh, was there a particular event that inspired you to uh, write the book, My Yes on the Table or a story? It had been stirring in my heart for a long time because once I came back from Nepal, I started coming alive ministries and I got a master's in trauma counseling and trauma care. And so I had literally reached this point where I believed I was living in faith. I had said yes to God, but then I was in a prayer time and God said to me, will you give me anything? And I, I was saying back to the Lord, uh, I thought I had, Lord, uh, you know, I'm single, I'm living for you, I'm, I um, have been living on faith, and um, but I just felt the Lord say, write the word yes, and just lay it down before me on a table. So I literally wrote the, wrote the word yes, and put it down on this table, and the Lord was like, will you live with your yes on the table? So whenever I call, wherever I call you, however I call you, you've already said yes. And so that was stirring in my heart for a long time. And then I had the opportunity to go stand on Mount Nebo as part of my yes. Part of my yes had taken me to the Middle East to um, go minister to refugees who were struggling um, as a result of war. And while I was there, I... I went afraid because things were very hot in that area of the world right then. And many people told me, you do not need to go. If you go, you will not come back. And I felt God had already asked me to say yes and to go and to go afraid. And so while there, I saw God do extraordinary things in that yes, even while I had to go afraid. And he showed me how to move from fear to faith. And I saw him ministering and moving among people um, that had experienced horrific stories of war, including the first person I met there um, that I went to minister in her house. She told me that she had had a dream where Jesus, a man named Jesus, told her that there was a girl who was blonde hair and blue eyed coming to tell her who Jesus was. And I just thought, what if I had not said yes to God? And he allowed me to be the one to tell him, her about him. So that same trip, I'm standing on Mount Nebo and I'm looking out over where Moses would have looked into the promised land and he was unable to go in. And I just prayed and asked God, God, I don't want to miss one bit of the promised land you have for me because of fear or unbelief. And I don't want to look out over into it. I want to be in it. And so in that moment, God just placed in my heart the desire to write this book. My yes is on the table, moving from fear to faith and to encourage others along the journey, not as someone who has got it all figured out, but someone who has learned um, what it means to say yes, even afraid. So what was probably one of the hardest yeses in your life then? I think each season comes to a point where uh, we have those things we have to surrender. And um, I remember, I think leaving Nepal was one of the hardest because I thought, I just loved it. I loved the missionary life and I didn't know what I was leaving for. It reminds me of when Ab God told Abraham to go and he didn't tell him 
exactly anything more than just go. You're going to a place that I will show you. And that was kind of my my moment where God said leave, but I didn't know what was next. So that was um quite the yes step for me. And and then now I think um even just writing this book, I'm gonna be honest, I wanted to give up. I had tried to um, get a published book for 11 years and gotten 11 years of no, you're not ready yet. You, you know, it's just, it's a, the publishing world is vast. And I had a dream to be published with many publishers. And so continuing to press forward and, and believing God had given that dream to me, even when there were no's, but trusting God was working in the waiting, that was quite a yes for me to move from fear to faith and keep pursuing that, which I believed God had called me to. And then in 2020, I got God's perfect time for, yes, the contract for this book. So at one point, you did a little survey and you posted a question in social media um, asking people to fill in the particular fear that is preventing them from saying yes to God. And you got lots of responses. So I'm curious, what were some of those responses? So I asked the question, I want to say yes to God, but I'm afraid of blank. And the responses were, I was just amazed by the amount of people that responded and sent me long um, responses to what was stirring in their heart, even just reading that question. And responses varied from fear of rejection, fear of failure, fear of success, fear of the requirements of the yes, fear of will God provide what I need for the yes, fear of being inadequate, fear of will I hear God right? And the list could go on and on and on. But if you look at the underlying under theme of all of these fears, what it really comes down to, I believe, is we struggle sometimes to, can we really trust the goodness and the character of God? And I think that's what the enemy started with Eve when he tempted her and has been trying to tempt us with that underlying fear ever since. So that's a good point. Um, So then what would you say are some practical ways that people can fight their fears? I think the first step is acknowledging it. There is freedom in just not, once it's out of the dark into the light is to say, I am afraid. I think throughout the Bible, we have story after story of the people God had called to say yes and the things he had called them to. They admitted they were afraid and God came alongside of them and over and over and over would provide his spirit and his comfort. And so my number one thing is to acknowledge in prayer, pour out your heart. Lord, I want to say yes to you, but just like the father who Jesus was going to heal this child, he said, I believe, help my unbelief. And just pouring out those fears. And then I would encourage the listeners to do that very practical thing, which I did and write the word yes out on a piece of paper in the sand. Um, Just get as artsy as you want, but write it out and put it somewhere as an act of surrender and a prayer. And then just keep praying that prayer. It's a daily, it's a, I wake up and have to say it again and again and again, because it's not just a one-time surrender. And so I would encourage you to do that. And then just dive into the promises of God because the character and the goodness of God is what propels you into um, living out his glory in your story. And I would encourage you to just find those promises and claim those promises in God's word and, and then have godly community around you and who are supporting you as you say yes to God. And But the, I think the number one first step is to admit that you're afraid. Yes. So I, you know, I, I have these conversations um, with the people that are involved with our ministry uh, because, you know, in essence, our work um, is missions work and it's taking people outside of their comfort zone to the nations. And so sometimes people also, I feel like, struggle with knowing, is this really God's will? You know, mm-hmm. maybe, maybe it's, uh, another fear masked, you know, but they, uh, they ask a question, well, how do I know that it is God's will? It's not just my desire, but it is truly God's will. So what would you say to a person like that? Um, and I speak to this in one of the chapters of the book, because that was an over and over and over again answer. I want to say yes to God, but I'm afraid I'm not hearing God right. 
when we're at a crossroads, is this God? Is this me? I mean, whether it's a crossroads of a relationship or often even um, a ministry opportunity. And um, what I would say is first, I love that we were gifted. Um, Jesus said, I'm sending you a counselor. I'm sending you the presence of the Holy Spirit. And so remembering that we have that gift of the Holy Spirit who is inside of us. When we accept Jesus, we accept the presence of the Holy Spirit who guides us. And I love, there's a verse in Isaiah that says, whether you look to the right or the left, you will hear a voice behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. And in James, we are told in James chapter one, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives it generously. I love that word, generously and without reproach. So I love that we can pray and ask God to speak to us, to show us. And when we know his word, like the more you know God's word, the more you're reading it and in it, you will know um, the the direction of God, the, the way God moves. And so knowing his word and then asking godly community to come alongside of you also and um, just pray with you through the decisions. Um, But when you, especially when you know the way God works and what, when it's for his glory, um, just saying, yes, I believe he will reveal to you. (laughs) And I have also in the book, what to do when we all have those moments where we mistake, we make mistakes, We're, we're human. And so are the characters in the Bible. They're real people just like us who made mistakes as well. And um, that's why I love the compassion and uh, grace of God when we miss it at times. So what are some of the most important lessons that you have learned from this journey of saying yes to God? I think one is to just like when they reached the Jordan River in Joshua and they had to... They had a choice. Are they going to step into the water? And the priests were the one who went first. They stepped into that water. And one of the things I've learned is to just step in. And um, it may feel terrifying. It often does. And uh, But if I have prayed, if I have sought the Holy Spirit, if I've sought my community, even when it doesn't make sense, and it often does not, uh, because our yes to God often is he, we will see him do the impossible. And so, but you have to take those first baby steps of faith. So what I've learned is to just keep asking for the strength to take the next baby step of faith and the next one and the next one. And then um, when I see God do a miracle and part the water and um, it's important, just like the Israelites to go back in and pick up stones of remembrance, they were told to go back, get the the stones from the river, pile them up and remember. So I often, when I'm afraid, have learned to go back and think about what God did before because the God of my yesterdays is still working today. And the God of the yesterdays in the Bible is the same God working in our lives today. So um, that is another practical thing I've learned is when I become overwhelmed with fear of the yes, and uh, maybe it's, will you provide for this trip? Um, what the finances I need, looking back to see how God has provided before. Or um, I feel very inequipped, ill-equipped for this journey and looking back and seeing how actually I was, but God showed up and moved. And so I would encourage that as a great step is to look back as you look forward to what your next faith step is. Well, and I think... um Even in the story of Israelites, you know, as they're traveling uh, through the desert, they're constantly reminded of how God brought them out of Egypt, you know, and and that would become the turning point, you know, in their discouragement or grumbling or complaining. Uh, And and so I agree that um, standing on God's promises and not just promises, but on what he has, his fulfilled promises is probably the most solid way of um, keeping your faith um, and and just keeping the intention, you know, of, yeah, it's good to step into the water, but that then there's that discouragement that comes, you know, and the enemy comes against us um, trying to hold us back because the beauty, I think, of saying yes to God is that it ultimately leads you to your destiny, you know, to the center of God's will, to the ultimate fulfillment And I think the enemy tries to do his best to keep us from that. So, um, well, I I know that there is a story somewhere in uh, in your adventures about being on the back of an elephant gone wild. (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, I know. Yes, not many people have this story, Helen. So um, well, I've been I, on I the back you. of an elephant, but it was perfectly tame. <laughs> so okay, was, okay. Yeah, I you know, it was an interesting experience, but but nothing. Um, Fortunately, the elephant didn't go wild. It didn't go wild. Well, you know, the Lord speaks to me in some of these, you know, crazy moments. And I I love how the Holy Spirit will whisper to your heart, right? So I was on the back of an elephant in the jungle and it was a vacation. So we were just doing this for fun. We had seen in the brochure how we could ride on this elephant and see other wildlife. And um, so I and my friends climbed up the ladder. You know, elephants are very tall. And I had gotten in the box on the back of this elephant. So I'm on a corner. My friends are on the corners of the box. And it was fun at first. And then the elephant was moving very slowly hours into this jungle ride. I was getting a little bored. We had seen no other wildlife, only people who had paid to ride on elephants. And so eventually, as the journey was going on, the the guide down below yelled up in Nepalese, which I speak, um, to Pailai Dedi Mochi Cha, which translates, uh, (laughs) you are very fat. And he's talking to me. (laughs) So, um, and then he tells me I'm throwing off the weight of an elephant. And I'm not sure whether to laugh or cry, Helen, but I just decided to laugh, you know? Uh, And so he tells me, I want you to get out of the box and get onto the head of this elephant so we can distribute the weight. I just thinking, oh, okay, this elephant does not have handles on its, this is not a ride. This is a real elephant, but I did it. I got out of the box, got on the elephant's head, was holding on. And all of a sudden the elephant saw its uh, elephant love in the field. And um, I will keep it, uh, you know, G rated here. So I'm not going to go into the national geographic version, but it started running and I'm holding on for dear life. And what had been a very normal ride became the adventure of a lifetime as I'm hanging on. And then eventually sparing you the details, I slid out of off the head back right into the box that I was on. (laughs) And um, I heard the Lord speak to my heart in that moment and say, Jen, If you will get out of the box of your comfort and say yes to me and not just say yes to the safe and the same and risk, believe and trust. And if you will take me out of the box that you think that I need to stay in, what fits, what makes sense in your head, your heart. If you will stay out of the box, I will take you on the Ephesians 3.20, more than you could ask or imagine, adventure of a lifetime. And that is what I want to encourage the listener. As you say yes, you are saying yes to a God who has more for you than you could ever ask or imagine. And let's just get out of the box and hang on and watch for the adventure of a lifetime. Wow. You know what I would have been thinking being back <laughs> in the box? Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <Saving me. laughs> <laughs> but God does speak to us in very um, powerful ways. And uh, uh, so I want to ask you, what are some of the things that a person can expect if they just commit to this journey of saying consistently yes to God? Mm. I think you will expect surprises, which is why yes comes with surrender. Because God's plans are often, they are always higher than our ways, but they're often not our ways. So you can expect surprises and you can expect opposition from the enemy because Jesus came to give us life, but the enemy came to steal, kill, and destroy. So that's why we need the spiritual armor, Ephesians 6, the belt of truth, breastplate of righteousness, feet fitted with the gospel of peace, helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, shield of faith. So Really expect to just be in the truth so that you can counteract the lies of the enemy. And then just expect that when you say yes to God, it is going to be like the adventure of a lifetime. You are going to see God use you. You're going to see God show you his his glory. You're going to see his glory in your story. And I believe when you get to heaven someday, you're going to get to hear him say, well done, because you said yes. And just like the Israelites went into the promised land, once they got there, they had to possess the land. And that's what yes is. A daily yes is possessing that which God has called us to and seeing God be the promise maker, be the promise keeper. And that's what I'll tell you as you say yes, that every promise he makes, he keeps because he is good and he does not change. Amen. 
This is a very powerful statement, and I know that uh, our listeners will definitely enjoy this book. So uh, where is your book available? How, how could someone get a hold of it if they wanted to read it? I would be so honored for you to take the adventure of Yes. So it's available wherever books are sold. But if you would like to find out more, you can go to myyesisonthetable.com. And I just encourage the listener to, to take that moment, write your word yes. And put it on a table and watch God move you from fear stops to faith steps. And it is the adventure of a lifetime to say yes to God. So I would love for you guys to join in on this yes journey. I think this is a perfect challenge. And uh, I, uh, I'm excited to read this book. I have not read it yet, <laughs> but thank you so much. It did just doing... come out last week, Helen. You're good. Oh, well, so I'm not... <laughs> Okay. You're not behind. <laughs> That's good. So uh, thank you so much, Jen, for joining. And I wish you God's favor and protection in this adventure. Uh, I think you made a powerful statement in your book. Thank you, Helen. Jen's story of putting her yes on the table is very inspiring. I think it's a testament to God's faithfulness to fulfill His promises. If you would like to learn more about her ministry, Coming Alive Ministries, or purchase her book, My Yes on the Table, I am going to post the link to her website in the show notes of this episode. At World Missions Alliance, we believe that change lives change lives. If you would like to learn more about what we do at World Missions Alliance, I encourage you to visit our website, rfwma.org. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Limitless Spirit Podcast. Until next time, I'm Helen Todd. Limitless Spirit Podcast is produced by World Missions Alliance. We believe that changed lives change lives. If you want to see your life transformed by Christ's love, or if you want to help those who are hurting and hopeless and discover your greater purpose in serving Christ through short-term missionary work, check out our website, rfwma.org, and find out how to get involved.